The following is a Hoop Bowl presentation. Hello, and welcome to the Box Score Breakdown Show presented by Hoop Ball. My name is Adrian Benjamins, and I'm joined by Neil Rochlani. And this episode of the Box Score Breakdown Show is brought to you by Hawaiian Isles Kona Coffee Company. Taste the Kona difference. Get yourself some delicious coffee. Go to HawaiianIsles.com. You can also find their delicious coffee on Amazon. Hit, make sure to uh, go get some coffee. Support our wonderful sponsor, Neil. How are you doing today? Adrian, I'm doing well, but I want to make one correction from yesterday. We did not have our DFS contest today. We're having oh. it Friday. I don't know if you saw. Okay. I thought, there were, thought we were going back to Wednesdays. It looks like this week is Friday. Maybe. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I think we were planning on going back to Wednesdays after the, the sort of holiday um, ended. So uh, I have to wait two more days to defend my crown, which is nice, which means I'm still champion for two more days. So that's hey, nice. that that Friday night lineup thing worked for you last week, man. I think uh, let's leave it there until uh, you are dethroned, man. <laughs> but, you know, I have to admit, uh, throughout the day, I was kind of on Twitter uh, listening to a lot of NBA news. And today felt like a real fun day to set a lineup because there were so many good fill-in type guys. Am I right? Yeah, I got the phone guys right, but I didn't get the. I'm still trying to figure out how to get the the guys where you don't know the more matchup guys that are out there normally. That is something I I'm like fifty fifty on. So until I get better at that, I'm not going to be consistent at this. But anyway, yes, there were some filler guys that produced for sure. All right, well, Neil, we have a very busy Wednesday night slate. Uh, I can't even count how many games there are right now because there's so many, and most of them are all final. I'm going to be able to pretty much hit up the entire slate except for maybe one game. So it's going to be a pretty big night. Should we just jump right into it? I I don't really see anything that's majorly newsworthy. Do you? I haven't seen anything either. Um, just the Valanciunas update that he's out another three to four weeks, um, which is a little, I guess a little more than we expected, but not 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 too bad. And um, Nothing really else. You know, Butler sat tonight, but nothing serious. Um, we'll see about Lowry. No new updates on him. So, yeah, let's go in. I think it's your turn to start. I think it is, too, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, I <laughs> All right, I'm going to lead us in. You know, I'm just looking at Basketball Monster. I'm just going to go down the list in the order that they have the games. Going to start with Miami and Cleveland. Uh, the Heat getting the victory here, 117 to 92. This one was a blowout. Going to jump in on the Heat side. Going to start with Josh Richardson. 24 points, five assists, two rebounds, four threes tonight. Two of two from the line, nine of 16 from the field. Um, Justice Winslow, a guy that you and I have been talking quite a bit about, has been in the starting lineup. Uh, the shooting wasn't quite there tonight. It was only three of 11 for 10 points, but... I think he's still got to stick with this guy. He's starting, getting the good usage. I think he'll have much better days than this. I love that he's uh, facilitating seven assists tonight, four rebounds, uh, four of four from the line. So I think better days will be ahead. We know he's not uh, great when it comes to field goal percentage, but I think he'll still be pretty good in a lot of other categories. Hassan Whiteside with eight points, 12 rebounds, a block. Um, four of eight from the field. Magruder got the start, but in only played 21 minutes for 10 points. James Johnson gets the start, only got 17 minutes for 11 points. Um, James Johnson with three threes, which is nice. Magruder also had a um, two threes. Uh, Derek Jones Jr. off the bench, but you know because it was the blowout, we saw the bench get extended run here. Jones Jr. in 31 minutes had 13 points, seven rebounds, two assists, two steals. Tyler Johnson, a guy that I left on my bench in a few leagues that I owned him, in, and uh, I'm really regretting that uh, decision. But like I said, looks like he just got some more run off the bench for the blowout. Six from ten for him for 16 points, three steals, four assists. Four rebounds for Tyler Johnson. Kelly Olenek with 10 points. Six, assi- uh, six rebounds and assists. Two threes for him. Bam Adebayo had eight points. 
uh, five assists, five boards. Dion Waiters is back. Dion Waiters is back, but um, just saw limited minutes here. Likely will come off the bench and see limited minutes for some time. Seven points, three assists. Neil, we talked about how crowded this team is. Now Dion Waiters is back. We're still waiting for Goran Dragic. We're still waiting for Wayne Ellington. Dwayne Wade missed this one um, due to health issue or an, an illness. What do you think of the Miami Heat? Yeah, so the depth here is so uh, massive that it's hard to find anyone. I will say, like, a good thing you mentioned on Derek Jones Jr., the 31 minutes are probably due to the blowout. So don't expect a line like don't expect minutes like this going forward. I do think he is the one guy you can't pick up in deeper leagues that might be okay going forward. Um, standard leagues, I don't think he's there yet despite having a standard league line tonight. Um, but if you need to stash someone or you need someone to start in deeper leagues and he's out there, he might he might work. Um, he is, I think, one of their better bench players. So I think we'll get some run. Other than that, though, I think uh, you covered it. This is a very deep team. Missing two guys who usually get, Wade usually gets a ton of usage. And uh, Ellington will take a lot of shots when he's back and Dragic because they're starting point guard. So, and guys, they still played like about 11 deep tonight. So it's crazy. Um, that's all. Should I uh, go on to the Cleveland side? Yes, sir. All right. Let's uh, start off with um, Tristan Thompson back in the lineup. 23 minutes tonight, 14, 2, and 1 on 5 of 9, shooting 4 of 6 on the free throw line, two steals, no blocks. Um, Colin Sexton, 12, 4, and 4 on 5 of 15, shooting. Two three pointers, no defensive stats. Teddy Osman, nine, three, and three on two of six from the field, three of three from the line, two three pointers, and a turnover. Rodney Hood, 13, two, and one on five of seven, shooting three three pointers, two steals, and a block. Um, Alec Burks, 27 minutes, nine, three, and zero on four of seven, shooting a three pointer. Uh, off the bench, Clarkson played 25 minutes. Not much of a scoring night tonight for him, though. Just 11 points on 4 of 9 shooting. Did get 5 assists. No rebounds, no steals, had a block. Larry Nance Jr. back to the bench. Although this is a pretty good night, considering he played 22 minutes. 6, 5, and 6 on 3 of 5 shooting. 3 steals and a block. Did have 3 turnovers. McCaw, 18 minutes. Della Vadova, 18 This is also a blowout game. I'm not sure if Larry Nance's minutes are going to stay in the 20s. Um... I think he should not be owned anymore, but uh, that's just my opinion. I think I've been wrong before, but I, I don't trust him now with Tristan Thompson back. I think his minutes, and Tristan only played 23 tonight. I think that would change if this game is closer. No one really on this team. I'm digging at the moment. I still think Sexton is worth a stash. Um, other than that, I'm kind of holding off on the rest of the Cavaliers until – if and when Kevin Love comes back, which he's expected to come back, I believe, in, uh sometime this month. We'll see. I'll s- believe it when I see it. But uh expect to come back on the 18th. And um, I don't have really anything else on the Cavs. Do you have any uh, additional comments? Personally, I'm really happy to see Tristan Thompson and Rodney Hood back. For whatever reason, in a few of my leagues, I own both of these guys and and I've been holding on to both of these guys. So uh, in the Hoopball Staff League, I have both these guys. I'm really happy to get them both back. My team can really use them right now. So uh, just pretty happy to see that. Other than that, you pretty much covered everything. Uh, Patrick McCaw, uh, I'm kind of curious to see what he could do. But uh, I don't know. I mean, definitely not a guy we're making a move on. And in really deep leagues, I'm just watching him. And, you know, the Cavs are kind of crowded in the backcourt right now. So uh, likely he won't have any value. But I just am going to keep an eye on him. All right. Uh, let's move over to the next game, Neil. Uh, I think the next one up is the Dallas Mavericks and the Charlotte Hornets. This one was also a blowout, 122-84. to 84, The Mavs getting the victory over the Hornets. Going to look in on the Mavs side. Going to start with the Harrison Barnes. 17 points, a steal, a block, four rebounds, one assist, two threes. Perfect 5 of 5 from the line, 5 of 14 from the field. Luka Doncic, uh, this was a pretty nice game from him. He had 18 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists. No defensive stats, but he did also add three threes, one of two from the line, seven of 16 from the field. Wesley Matthews had 11 points, 
with one three, four of four from the line, three of seven from the field in 25 minutes. DeAndre Jordan with eight points, 13 boards, one assist, a block, four out of seven from the field in 24 minutes. Dennis Smith Jr., this is actually a pretty nice line from him. In just 22 minutes, he had 18 points, three steals, seven assists, three threes, three out of four from the line, six out of 10 from the field, like the efficient shooting. I own him in a few leagues, and he's just wasting away on my bench. I just don't trust playing him. Uh, one of my biggest misses of the season, Dennis Smith Jr. Uh, uh, Powell with contributed off the bench, 15 points with eight boards, two assists a steal in 24 minutes. He also had two threes. And they got some nice contribution off the bench. Finney Smith with seven points. Five points from Berea and Harris. Uh, Neil, what do you think of the Dallas Mavericks? Yeah, the one line here that kind of jumps out at me is the guy that I've always kind of liked um, from a stat set issue, and that's Dwight Powell. Um, 15, 8, and 2 on 5 of 6 shooting, 3 of 3 from the line, two three-pointers to steal on a block. I really wish I could count on him for 24 minutes a night. I think he'd be worth an add at that level, but um, this just seems to be an aberration. Like you said, it was a blowout. Charlotte is missing uh, two key players. Um, I don't know if you listened to Dan's show today, but uh, there was a fantasy expert who talked about Dennis Smith Jr. maybe having a good game because he is from the Charlotte area, mm. and they said he was going to have lots of fans in the stadium, and they expected him to kind of be focused on. So uh, it kind of um, came to fruition. I don't, um, I'm not going to change my value on him. I still think He's someone, because of his percentages, I'm holding off on. I'm just shaking my head about Luka Doncic. This guy is just so amazing. Just love him. Um, all right, I'm going to go on to uh, the Charlotte side. Let's see. So they were missing. Um, Cody Zeller broke his hand. He's out a month. Jeremy Lamb uh, hamstring injuries out at least uh, to the next game. It could be uh, up to uh, another week or so. We'll see. How quickly he recovers. Tonight, though, Kemba Walker really struggled. 4-14 shooting. Played 27 minutes, 11 points, 3 rebounds, 5 assists on 3 of 4 from the free throw line. 0 from 5 from downtown. No defensive stats. Hernan Gomez, he gets a start. Just gets 18 minutes. Possibly he could get in the 20s, though. This was actually a decent sign. It was a blowout. 6 points, 10 rebounds, 1 assist on 3 of 8 shooting. And a block. I think if you picked him up, and you started him expecting more, he might get a little bit more than this. But uh, don't count him for 35 minutes a night. Um, Marvin Williams played 22 minutes, 10, 2, and 2 on 4 of 9, shooting 2 of 3 from the three-point three, three point land, uh, no defensive stats. Batum, I thought he might be a beneficiary of this um, depleted Charlotte team. Not really much tonight, though. Just 28 minutes, 8 points, 5 rebounds, 4 assists on 3 of 6 shooting, 2 three-pointers, a steal, no blocks. A guy who I did not expect to start but did, Devontae Graham, got to start a shooting guard. I played 34 minutes, uh, really struggled, though. 3 of 13 from the field, 10 points, 1 rebound, 2 assists. Did go 2 of 2 from the line, took 8 three-pointers, made 2 of them, 2 steals and no blocks, 3 turnovers. Miles Bridges played 24 minutes, 8, 5, and 2 on 2 of 9 shooting, did not really get a bump because of the absences. Neither did Malik Monk, although he did get hurt. Left the game, never really came back to it. Um, five minutes he just played and was 0 of 2 from the field. G- Kid Gilchrist got 14 minutes. Um, Biombo 15. Kaminsky, 16. These guys, Dwayne Bacon, 17, are still not going to get the minutes. And this isn't a blowout. So I think in standard games, this these minutes aren't going to go any higher. So I think Hernan Gomez can still be owned um, and picked up if not and maybe streamed. Uh, I don't know who else, though. I don't think Devontae Graham, and and we'll see what happens with Monk and Bridges, but there's real no opportunity that's obvious here for me. Uh, do you see it any differently, Adrian? I was, uh, you know, we talked about at the beginning of the show how tonight seemed like a fun night for DFS due to the fill-in guys, and Malik Monk was a guy, as soon as I found out that Jeremy Lamb was going to miss this one, he immediately came to mind. I was very surprised that Graham uh, was listed as a starter over Monk, but I still felt like Monk could put up a good game. As you mentioned, left this game with, I believe it was an ankle injury, didn't return, only played five minutes. Uh, I'm hoping it's not serious. I hope he, he can be ready for the next game, which is in Denver on Saturday. 
If so, I kind of do like Malik Monk as a stream. We've seen him have good games early in the season uh, when Jeremy Lamb does not play, so or when Jeremy Lamb is limited. So it's a guy I'm keeping an eye on, but uh, I'm probably not making a move on anyone except for Hernan Gomez. He got picked up in a lot of leagues already. Um, I'm hoping the low minutes from Hernan Gomez was due to the blowout factor and that he hopefully would have seen larger minutes if this game was closer. All right, Neil, should we move on to the next one? I will, I will note that you did pick him up in our league, and I'm very upset about that. <laughs> you know, I forgot who I dropped, but I immediately kind of regretted uh, who I who I dropped. I'll have to go back and look that up. But it's always uh, it's always sometimes like when you know a guy's a stream, it's really hard to know whether to mm-hmm. drop him or not. You know, for example, in one league, uh, I picked up Thomas Bryant and I dropped him, and now Thomas Bryant. We, we'll get to the Wizards later on tonight. He went off tonight and it looks like a great ad. So uh, you know, sometimes it's really tough to stick with the guy if he has, especially those fringe pickup guys, if they have a couple of rough games, it's real easy just to make a move on to the next guy when maybe you should stick with these guys. It's really tough. All right, I'm going to move over to the next game, the Atlanta Hawks. Let's keep rolling here. The Atlanta Hawks and the Washington Wizards. Oh, we were just talking about uh, Thomas Bryant. He had a monster game here. And the Wizards got the victory 114 to 98. But I am going to jump in on the Hawks. And we were just talking about pickups. This is a guy that I think needs to be picked up. Kevin Herter, 44 minutes tonight. Is that right? I mean, how many minutes in a game? Is there 45 minutes in a game? So this guy played almost the entire game. This is unreal. Uh, I believe he had a game just not too long ago where he played 40 minutes as well. So, look, if this guy's going to get minutes like this, he needs to be owned. Took 14 shots uh, tonight. He 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 only made five. Excuse me. He only made five for 12 points, a block, five assists, a rebound, one three. I think we got to stick with this guy. The scoring should be there. And uh, I think he'll provide some threes and some other stuff. Um, Trey Young with five points, nine assists, a block, a three, two of eight from the field. Deadman, this is a guy who we've seen has some big games just recently. I think we need to also stick with him. He's starting. The minutes are there. Six points tonight, a steal, a block, an assist, nine boards, three of eight from the field. Um, a guy you really need to stick with because he's just a stud is John Collins. 21 points, three assists, eight rebounds, four of five from downtown. Shot a very efficient eight of 14 from the field, one and two from the line. The only thing missing from this guy's game is some defense. If he could just, uh, you know, zero steals, zero blocks, he would be a perfect player if he contributed in those other categories. But no complaints. Still a great fantasy asset. Uh, Hamilton got the start. 21 minutes, got eight points, seven boards, and assists, one three. Off the bench, they got a nice game from uh, Alex Len. 24 points, 11 rebounds with three blocks. Shot a very efficient 11 of 19 from the field, one of two from the line. He even made a three-pointer. I wish we can count on Len to do anything like this going forward, but we don't, or at least I don't. Bembry with 11 points off the bench. Jeremy Lin had eight points, five assists, three steals off the bench. Uh, This team's missing Baysmore. We're still waiting on Terry and Prince to return. Neil, what do you think of the Hawks? Yeah, that's the one reason it gives me pause on Herder. I think he, um, I do have him in one league, and I think he can be a 3 and D guy second half of the season. Um, took seven threes tonight. He's a pretty good shooter tonight. Just made one of seven, so had a rough night shooting. But like you said, played virtually the whole game. Um, I don't um, I don't know how his role is going to take. I mean, he doesn't do a whole lot besides shooting and some, uh, you know, shoots three-pointers and then free throw percentage is very strong. I don't know... Um, what that's going to turn into though when Prince comes back and we'll see what happens with Bazemore when he comes back. I, I, you know, we we're all kind of wondering if Bazemore gets moved at some point this season um, or if he gets benched and they really want to tank. I, I don't, um, I'm a little hesitant on picking up Herder more than one league. 
it's kind of like I get one share of a guy and see if it works out, and then I'll invest more <laughs> if I can get, if uh, he works out. But uh, right now I'm holding on to one. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, like you said, Alex Len, I totally agree. I mean, this is just nuts. This guy, <laughs> I didn't think he was going to be in the league this year. I thought he was going to be somehow cut, but he's he's proven himself. So we'll see. He's going to stick around as a backup center, but that's all he is, and can't count on him for minutes. Washington, as we know, is depleted that. Um, position with uh, Howard out now. Markeith is is seeing a specialist, and who knows how long he's going to be out. Um, so I'll jump over to that side. As you mentioned, Thomas Bryant. Uh, start with him because he had a huge double double. Played thirty nine minutes himself, sixteen points, fifteen rebounds, one assist on five of seven shooting. He is a very good free throw percentage shooter as well. Six of six from the line tonight. Um, two steals, two blocks. So just a monster night from him, uh, especially for a guy you get off the waiver wire. Bradley Beal taking over in the scoring leadership here. 24 points, four rebounds, six assists on nine of 20 shooting. Three of three from the line, three three-pointers, two steals, no blocks, three turnovers. Uh, Trevor Ariza uh, back in the starting lineup, 39 minutes, 12 points, five rebounds, four assists on five of 15 shooting. Uh, one of three from the free throw line. It's a bit unusual. A three-pointer and a steal. That's kind of what we expect from him. Jeff Green, uh, this is a guy who I put in DFS, and he did not disappoint. 36 minutes, 22 points, 6 rebounds, 6 assists, 7-13 shooting, 4-4 four, four from the line, 4 three-pointers, no defensive stats, a single turnover. Uh, Sadoransky, he is the other backup, uh, I should say backcourt player with Beal now and Wall done for the year. Excuse me, Beal, playing with Beal with Wall done for the year. 37 minutes, 14, 11, and seven. I was hesitant to pick this guy up, Adrian, but after tonight, I am going to see if I can, in my fab dollars, how much I want to invest on this guy. I think he could be okay. Uh, I don't think he's going to be this good every night. Going against Atlanta always helps, but he had a ton of usage and he looked good out there. 14 points, 11 rebounds, seven assists on five of 10 shooting. To go three of six on the line, that gives me a little pause. Had a three-pointer, two steals, no blocks. Off the bench, um, like you said, uh, Chasson Randall, I'll probably pronounce his name wrong, uh, and then uh, Sam Decker. Otto Porter is back, but played just limited minutes, 14 minutes, went for 9, 1, and 2. Um, we'll, uh, I don't know if Santa Ranch is going to take a dip with um, – with, um, Porter coming back, I think it's going to be more Jeff Green. So I think Sadoransky and Brian are safe. I think those guys are going to be safe. I think Brian will be the better one if you could pick between two of them. But I think um, Markeith may be done for a while. Howard's done probably for the year. I mean, at least for a while. So this seems a little screwed up, too, because they're they're not very good. Anyway, what are your thoughts on the Wizards? Make sure uh, Thomas Sadoransky is picked up in your league. I agree with you, Neil. Probably, definitely will not be this good on most nights, but... Uh, last season, when John Wall was out, he was a top 75 player in category leagues. And uh, I think just the starting spot, the usage, the minutes, uh, you know, not a guy that scores a ton of points, but I love how he, he contributes in all these other uh, categories like he did tonight with 11 rebounds and 7 assists. He even gave you a 3 tonight and 2 steals. So, uh, man, definitely I think he's got to be picked up pretty much in all standard leagues. And uh, Thomas Bryant, man, this guy looks really good. He's This guy's probably already picked up in all your leagues as well. Double check. Uh, you know, the Wizards with, um, with John Wall done for the season. You mentioned uh, Morris is getting checked out. They could also uh, make some trades. There's rumors that Otto Porter can be on the block. They might just go into tank mode. Thomas Bryant could be a guy that benefits here. You know, this guy was on the Lakers roster a season ago, and the Lakers could really use a big man like this. What a mistake for them not to keep this guy, which they probably could have done pretty cheaply. So, uh, yeah, as a Laker fan, I'm very disappointed to see a really talented big man leave for nothing and play well in uh, Washington. All right, Neil, going to move over to the next game. Uh, the Pelicans and the Brooklyn Nets. Nets is the next one I got up. Uh, this one was close. Nice to see a close game after all of the uh, holy moly. <laughs> I think my uh, I think my computer's glitching over here, Neil. Uh, I'm looking at Anthony Davis. 
I guess I should say the Nets got the victory, 126 to 121. Going to look in on the Pelican side, and I am uh, blown away right now by Anthony Davis. 34 points to go along with 26 <laughs> rebounds. Oh, my goodness. He even gave you three blocks, a steal, four assists. He was 8 of 10 from the line. He even gave you two threes tonight. What did this guy not do tonight? He did it all. 12 of 25 from the field. He played 42 minutes tonight. Wow. Um, Jeez, man. Uh, the best player in fantasy, hands down. We know why. Okay, uh, Holiday, 20 points, a steal, four assists, four rebounds, three threes. He shot 8 of 16. Moore gave you a good scoring game with 16 points, two steals, and assists. Two threes tonight, six of 11 from the field, two of two from the line. Randall is still doing his thing with Nico Mirotic out of the lineup. Julius Randall's been pretty good. 21 points from him. Love the defensive stats, too. A steal, two blocks, four boards, two assists, five of nine from the line, eight of 13 from the field. Alfred Payton. This guy looks like he's back. Neil, he played really good. 25 points to go along with seven dimes, two boards, uh, two threes tonight. Shot a very efficient 10 of 15 from the field, three of four from the line. An outstanding game from him. I hope he. I hope he's back for good. I hope he keeps this up and can surge into the second half of the season. Off the bench, not very much to talk about. Tim Frazier's falling off a cliff. Uh, nobody else really to even mention here off the bench. Neil, what do you think of the Pelicans? Yeah, well, let's. Uh, I'm going to avoid the obvious as I normally talk about my my true love, but I'm going to go right to Alfred Payton because he is the one guy that um, is probably out there in most leagues. I dropped him when he got hurt. Wasn't doing much in the beginning of the season. He is currently still on a per game basis in eight cat leagues, one thirty one. He just came back. This is his second game back. First game back, he struggled. This is against the Brooklyn team, which runs up and down, not known for their defense. So give it a you know a little bit of uh, salt on this um, on this line. I do think, though, I did draft him late in my draft, so I, I believe that if he could fit into this offense and produce, a little worried about his percentages. His field goal percent has been fine this year. He's shooting 49% on the year. I know he's only played eight games, so it's a very limited sample size. And his free throw percent is 70%, so not too bad. I think this guy might be worth a flyer uh, if you need a point guard and they're hard to find at this point. So um, I would probably take him over Sadoransky, although I think it's a tough call. Um, I, I just think it, it's just a little more proven, although Sadoransky has a higher upside. So I'll leave it at that. And uh, that's all I'm going to talk about on the Pelicans. I think everything else we know, we're just waiting for Miritich to come back. I don't know what this illness is. It seems like he's day-to-day. -day. He's been day-to-day -day for like a month, so I'm not sure what's going on. Um, any other thoughts before I go to Brooklyn? Uh, Mirotic may also be suffering from a right ankle injury as well. So it may be more than a little bit more than an illness. But uh, I, I'm hearing he could be close to a return. So I think we'll see him maybe towards the end of this week. All right. I'm going to put in my fantasy DFS. I hope you're right. D'Angelo <laughs> <laughs> uh, Russell. <laughs> Led the team with 35 minutes and 22 points, five rebounds, 13 assists on nine of 21 shooting. Two of two from the line, two three pointers, two steals, and a block. A single turnover. Another nice game from Joe Harris. He's been streaky now. 29 minutes, 21 points, two rebounds, one assist on nine of 16 shooting. It's that field goal percentage from a shooting guard, which is phenomenal. Three three pointers, a steal. Won't get you a whole lot of else, but uh, that's really. Uh, good value. Um, Jared Allen, a quiet night in 31 minutes, 10 points, 11 rebounds on three of six shooting. To go four, four from the line, a steal and two blocks. Jared Dudley, back in the starting lineup, played 24 minutes, eight points, two rebounds, no assists on three of five shooting, a steal, no blocks. Rodians Karuks, I, I I don't want his middle name. I'll butcher that one too. 26 <laughs> minutes, 10 points, two rebounds, one assist on four, seven shooting, two three-pointers and a block. I had this guy at one point, Adrian. I did drop him. I just don't. This is a very deep team. They like to run a lot of wings out there. I just think he's going to be the starter, but not really producing top value or start 
worthy value. Uh, off the bench, Damari Carroll played 29 minutes, 19-6-3. and three. He did have a good night tonight. He's had a couple of good games, 6-12 of 12 from the field, 4 of 7 from the line, 3 three-pointers. Dinwiddie, 18-4. Excuse me, 18.0 rebounds, four assists, five of 12 shooting, six to six on line, two three pointers. Uh, Shabazz Napier, 24 minutes. Ed Davis even got in there for 17 minutes and 12 rebounds. Um, there must have been a lot of missed shots if uh, Anthony Davis got 26 rebounds, or he was just playing like uh, um, volleyball with himself at the rim, <laughs> just missing and getting rebounds. That is just ridiculous. Anyway, um, my only takeaway from Brooklyn is. I think Joe Harris, if he's out there, I think he's worth picking up if you need um, three-pointers and a good field goal percentage from a wing. Uh, not much else here um, that I can trust. It looks like D'Angelo Russell has been solid this year. Knock on wood, 54 overall in A-Cat Leagues. Adrian, you called this one. You said top 50. Everyone here at Hoopball, let's just say, did not agree with you. And uh, <laughs> so far, you have been proven right. So. You know, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I got a little lucky on the D'Angelo Russell thing where he he definitely saw a significant boost in value when uh, Karis Levert went down. So um, I got a little lucky on that one, but it is nice to see D'Angelo Russell play well. Although I will admit. Um, efficiency definitely an issue turnovers also too have been an issue with him although tonight only had one turnover in 35 minutes I hope he can keep that up but yeah for the most part you're pretty happy if you drafted uh, D'Angelo Russell this year oh also just real quick I'm a little curious to see what happens when uh, (laughs) Hollis Jefferson gets back and and Crab looks like Crab's going to miss a couple more weeks, so we're not worried about him. But you know, so, uh, I love that you said go get Joe Harris. I've I've been in that camp for quite some time, but uh, I'm a little worried to see what happens when Hollis Jefferson gets back in this lineup as well. All right, uh, should we move on to the next one? Let's do it. Let's keep rolling. Uh, next game I got up is the Detroit. Pistons and the Memphis Grizzlies. Pistons get the victory 101 to 94. Gonna take a look at the Pistons. I'm gonna start with Blake Griffin. Neil, you and I have talked about what a pleasant surprise this guy has been, and he did not disappoint tonight. 26 points, seven assists with eight rebounds, two steals. He even gave you two threes. Shot 11 to 23 from the field, two of five from the line. Drummond with somewhat of a uh, low end double double 11 points 10 rebounds only shot 4 of 13 from the field which is somewhat unusual from him um two steals a block two assists three of five from the line reggie jackson a guy who we see uh have a good game have bad game he's real on and off tonight he looked on 16 points a steal two blocks five assists seven rebounds Four threes tonight, six of 11 from the field. This is a pretty surprising line against a really nice defensive team in the Memphis Grizzlies. Reggie Bullock had 13 points, three assists, a rebound, and three threes, four of eight from the field. Uh, Brown got the start. He, He only got 20 minutes. May have been due to foul trouble. He had four fouls. He had three points, five rebounds, two assists. I hope you are not counting on Brown. Off the bench, they got some nice production from Luke Kennard, in 27 minutes, he put up 13 points, five rebounds, two assists with two threes. Galloway had 11 points, two steals, three threes. Not too much else to talk about. Stanley Johnson returned but did not do much in six minutes. Um, What do you think of the Detroit Pistons, Neil? Yeah, speaking of guys that have played so well this year, Blake Griffin, as you mentioned, I I stay away from him because usually I want my big men to get higher percentages from the field and defensive stats. And that is something he has struggled this year still with his defensive stats, but he is just dominating offensively 25 points this year. He's also getting close to two and a half, three pointers, close to nine rebounds, five assists. He's been a beast. Um, 27th in eight category leagues. Now he does turn the ball over quite a bit. So nine cats, not nearly as high, but it's phenomenal. I, I, you know, I, I thought he was had something to prove this year. That was my thought. He got traded last year towards the end of last year. It's probably like, um, it's probably like a deer in headlights for the first two months over there, not knowing what happened to his life from the LA scene to the Motor City. But um, I think he's a guy who works really hard in the off season, and I knew he was going to bring it this year. 
and uh, he has. I thought it was going to be more just like Detroit would be a better team. Not necessarily he would have a great fantasy year, but it's translated to that. Uh, the wing position, still watching that. Bullock, like you said, Brown. Those are the only two guys I have my eyes on. Maybe Kennard, but he doesn't get enough minutes. Um, anyway, nice win for Detroit on the road here in Memphis. I'm going to hop over to their side. Let's start with JJJ, 35 minutes, 26 points, 10 rebounds, 2 assists on 8 of 11 shooting, 8 of 8 from the free throw line, 2 of 2 from the three-point land. This is a guy who made 10 threes, didn't he, in a, in a summer league game? My goodness. Tonight, no defensive stats, but put up a solid fantasy line. Mike Conley struggled tonight. Um, 28 minutes, 0 of 8 shooting. Big reason probably why they lost tonight. No points. Three rebounds, one assist. Um, no, Nothing really tonight from Conley. Marcus saw 11, 7, and 3 on 4 of 10 shooting. Two of two from the free throw line. A three-pointer and two blocks. Kyle Anderson putting up a 15.5 rebound, one assist line on a 7 of 9 shooting. One block, though. No three-pointers, no steals. Garrett Temple. Played 37 minutes, just seven points on two of eight shooting. A rebound, three assists, two of three from the free throw line, a three-pointer, two steals, and a block. To Michael Green, 24 minutes, eight, seven, and three on four of eight shooting. Um, nothing else in the stat line. Shelvin Mack gets 23 minutes. Dylan Brooks, um, 18 minutes. Tough night for Conley, tough night for Memphis. Jaron Jackson Jr., it's nights like this that make you think maybe – Adrian would have taken him over Doncic. <laughs> Maybe he's going to be right. I don't know. We've got some, we got some pretty cool rookies this year, and he's one of them. So we'll see how it plays out. Uh, you ready to move? Uh, what are your thoughts on Memphis? What a bum. JJJ, without, he, he didn't even get a block tonight. Oh, man. Yeah. Dump this guy to the wire. No, I'm just kidding. JJJ, what cheese, uh, man. Love, as you said, man, this rookie class with Doncic and J, uh, JJJ, it's, it's just been outstanding, man. And it's so much fun to see. Uh, we just want to note real quick I feel like uh, Kyle Anderson has been slowly coming around. Last four games, he's been in double-digit points, and he's got a 20-point game in there in the last one. So uh, over 30 minutes in the last four games. Uh, tonight was just a ho-hum game with the, with just the five rebounds and assists, but I feel like his scoring is starting to come up. This is kind of what I envisioned at the beginning of the season. I thought he'd be a low double-digit scorer, and uh, it's starting to happen. So, you know, I've had this guy on my bench in some leagues where – um, you've got a game cap limit in your uh, positions, and so uh, I finally have moved him into a starting role where he's now. So I feel pretty good about it. He's looked pretty good the last four games. All right, uh, going to move over to the next game. Let's keep it going, man. Man, this is definitely a big slate, but there's some really great games here. The Timberwolves and the Celtics I got up next. The Celtics getting the victory here, 115-102. to uh, and I'm going to take a look at the Timberwolves. going to start with, uh, you know, I always start with Towns. I'm going to start with Andrew Wiggins, who had 31 points, no defensive stats, three assists, two rebounds, two threes, 10 of 18 from the field, 9 of 12 from the line is pretty nice. Tyus Jones, who's been filling in for um, Jeff Teague, and also Derek Rose has been out of the lineup for a few games here. 14 points for Jones to go along with nine assists, four steals, a rebound, seven of 14 from the field. Love the 40 minutes and the usage. I think this guy's pretty much needs to be streamed while these two other point guards are out of the lineup. Carl Anthony Towns, cat with the big double double, 28 points, 12 rebounds, also adding seven assists, a block of three. A perfect 3-of-3 three three from the line. An efficient 12-of-21 from the field. Outstanding game from another guy who's one of the best fantasy players out there. Taj with only 8 points, 5 boards. Josh Koji getting the start here with them missing some guys. Um, only 3 points from him. 2 steals, 2 assists, 3 rebounds. I love this guy in Dynasty League's 
for down the road, future future seasons. I think this guy's going to be a stud. But with the crowded uh, with the crowded lineup with this team, how loaded it is, it's not going to happen for him this season. Off the bench, uh, Sarek, man, him and Taj just really canceling each other out. Seven points for Sarek in only 22 minutes. He also had six boards. Not too much else to talk about here, Neil. I, I should also mention with with the Koji starting, it, that was also due to Robert Covington, who is out of this lineup as well. So some some key contributors missing from this lineup. Neil, what do you think of the Timberwolves? Yeah, tonight really to play, like you said, Covington, Rose, and Teague all dealing with ankle injuries, all questionable. So they could be back as early as next game. Let's see what happens. Um, Tyus Jones. Uh, Adrian, per game basis, a cat last week, 27 on the player radar. This man is streamable for sure when he is starting. Unfortunately, like you said, Tibbs likes his starters. So when he's starting, he's getting 40 minutes. When he's not starting, he's getting eight. So um, tough to play him then. But right now, keep rolling with him. Um, Hey, the, Friday, Friday, if we're still going to be missing Rose and Teague, would you say that Jones is a pretty solid DFS play? I'd have to imagine his uh, his salary's got to be pretty low, right? It's starting to creep up a bit. Um, he's starting to come almost in line with Rose. Uh, the market's realizing that he's, that he's this good because he's had like five games in a row now that are very good. So you can't really buy a low on him anymore. He's still outperforming his, his value, his price, but it's it's starting to get pretty fairly priced now. So... Hey, my, speaking my, of go ahead. Speaking of, Dan Vespers just said on Twitter that there's already 28 people in Friday's uh, DFS contest. So, you guys, you might want to jump in there a little early. Don't wait for Friday. Jump in there. Get in there because uh, looks like this thing could fill up pretty quick. We're still just two days away. We already got 28 people in there. That's pretty good. Yeah, not bad. And also, uh, because I finished first last time, I'm probably going to finish last this time. So <laughs> I, I, you can probably take my money. So no way, that's one. Neil, that's one less no competitor. <laughs> whatever, whatever you were doing when you set that lineup, you need to get back into that. Uh, get back into that mode, man. Get back into that feeling and just keep it going, Neil. Yeah, good stuff, man. <laughs> I have no idea what I did. All right, <laughs> go over to Boston side. Uh, we'll start off with. Well, Kyrie was out tonight, uh, questionable as well, coming into today. And right eye irritation is what I'm seeing. Um, did not play. So this was a good play for DFS. It was Terry Rozier, pretty much a standard play for many people. And he did deliver 32 minutes, 16 points, three rebounds, five assists on six of 10 shooting, two of two from the free throw line, two three-pointers, five steals and a block. This guy would be a starter on most teams. He is very good. Um, Al Horford. 23 minutes, 15, 5, and 4, 7 and 9 shooting, 3 pointer, 2 blocks. Marcus Morris played 24 minutes. It looks like he left this game, or it looks like I'm seeing a sore neck. I'm not sure what, if he left early. Uh, if so, he just got 24 minutes because of that. 12 points, 3 rebounds, 1 assist, 3 of 9 shooting. Did go 4 or 5 in the free throw line, 2 steals, excuse me, 2 3 pointers, a steal and a block. Jason Tatum, a very quiet night in 31 minutes, 8 points on 3 of 11 shooting, 3 rebounds. Four assists, two of two from the line, no three-pointers, no steals, a single block. Uh, Marcus Smart, another quiet line from him. He struggles, only took two shots tonight. Two points, three rebounds, eight assists, two steals. Gordon Hayward off the bench. He had his breakout scoring game tonight. 32 minutes, 35 points on 14 of 18 shooting. Phenomenal night from him. One rebound, five assists. Three of three from the line, four three pointers, no defensive stats. Jalen Brown contributing off the bench here at 29 minutes, 10 points, five rebounds, two assists on four or seven shooting, a three pointer, a steal, and a block. One, one, one tonight, one of two from the line. Uh, Semi Ojale gets 18 minutes, goes for five, three, and one, and a steal. Daniel Tice, 14 minutes. Uh, is a, I can't say this guy, yeah, Buscelli. I'm not going to try his first name. 11 minutes. Um, anyway, Marcus Morris, I think, has, has should be picked up. He's probably picked up in most of your leagues. I think we talked about him last time as well. I was very late to this game. 77th on the player rater for the season. I should have jumped on him much earlier. Um, see how bad this neck injury is if he stays out. Um, other than that, these guys are doing okay. I don't think Smart 
if you need steals, uh, pick him up. Otherwise, he hurts you in too many categories, in my opinion. In eight cat leagues, one eleventh on the year in per game basis. And Hayward, we'll see. One eighteen on the year, we'll see if this you know um, gets him going and maybe maybe can crack the top hundred by season's end. Um, what are your thoughts on the Celtics? Uh, Terry Rozier, one of those guys that I was looking at. If if I was setting up a DFS lineup tonight, as soon as it was announced that Kyrie was going to miss this one, I immediately thought of Terry Rozier, and he did not disappoint. Love to see Gordon Hayward with this line tonight. It's nice to see, uh, just nice to see him put up the scoring numbers that we used to see back when he was in Utah. So but I hope he can keep this up or keep rolling. It's a pretty nice game from him. All right, so let's let's keep this going. Let's jump into the next one: the Orlando Magic and the Chicago Bulls. This one, unfortunately, was a blowout. The Magic getting the victory, one twelve to 84 i will look in on the magic side gonna start with aaron gordon who flirted with the triple double he's been real up and down lately but tonight was very had a very nice game with 18 points nine assists seven rebounds a shot eight of 14 from the field two or three from the line he even gave you a block it's pretty good game uh fournier had 13 points seven assists three threes shot five at ten from the field uh, Vucevic, 22 points, 12 rebounds, 3 assists. Man, the defensive stats from him are fantastic in this one. 2 steals, 3 blocks. Has not disappointed. Has been pretty good all season long. 1-3 uh, tonight, 10-15 of 15 from the field. DJ Augustine, in 25 minutes, had 10 points with 6 assists, 2 rebounds. Jonathan Isaac, uh, 7 points, 2 blocks. Three rebounds, one three. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Terrence Ross with 15 points, six rebounds, two assists off the bench. He even gave you three threes, six and nine shooting. Mo Bamba here, 10 points with three blocks, five rebounds in just 20 minutes. It's pretty good. Not too much else to talk about here, Neil. What do you think of the Orlando Magic? Um, I guess, you know, the, the guy I kind of key in on now is, um, Isaac, because uh, he is the one with potential and could be out there tonight. Another disappointment. I, I don't think I, I can't emotionally take this guy on my team. So I, I don't know what you've done, but I don't think no matter how many, no matter how much potential people talk about. And I've seen it as well. And I, I've raved about it as well. It's just too heart wrenching for me to own. So I'm kind of almost like taking I might just like not watch him for two weeks and come back to him. Um, the one thing I am taking away as well is Terrence Ross. He's actually serviceable uh, if you need three and D stats. Um, tonight he had three three pointers, like you said, and a steal. Um, Mo Bamba looked decent, ten five with three blocks. I'm streaming him this week. They're playing four games, Orlando, so nice to see that. Uh, not much else um, to take away from this side, but I will go over to my Chicago Bulls, whose offense has been so bad. I never thought I would say this. But um, they might have downgraded in coaching. <laughs> <laughs> they really might have downgraded in coaching. Um, their defense hasn't got much, it's gotten a little bit better, but their offense is just stagnant. I mean, it just looked really bad tonight. All their all their key players are back. Um, start with Levine, played twenty eight minutes, sixteen three and three on six to ten shooting, four or five from the line, no steals, no blocks. Uh, go to market in tonight, fourteen six and one on six to twelve. In the field, two three pointers, two steals, no blocks. Um, Chris Dunn, 14 points, three rebounds, four assists on six to 12 shooting, one to one from the free throw line, a steal and three, excuse me, a three pointer and three steals. So nice night there. Justin Holiday very, very much has been struggling as of late. Tonight, one of seven in 26 minutes, just three points on that three pointer, four rebounds and assist. Nothing else to speak of. Um, and then Wendell Carter Jr. Adrian, I'm not seeing any notes on. He got three fouls early. Um, I guess he never came back in. 13 minutes, no points, one rebound on 0 5 shooting. Just a horrendous night from him. Um, off the bench, Keel Harrison plays 26 minutes, 11 3 and 2 on 5 of 14, shooting three steals. Uh, Antonio Blankney gets uh, 24 minutes, 11 4 and 1 on 5 of 12 shooting. 
Uh, Chandler Hutchinson, 22 minutes. Lopez, 16. Ryan Archie Diacono, 15 minutes as well. Yeah, it's just a very sloppy game from them. They never really, they got down early. They didn't, no one scored in, until there was like three minutes into this game. It was just one of those games that I was leaning towards taking the under. I don't know if it hit or not, but anyway, Bulls can't score. So can't score, can't do a lot of fantasy points. Um, I'm still holding on to Justin Holiday. He's obviously been a fine this year. He's going to probably end up dropping, though, about 20 ranks down to the 80s at some point. Um Marketing, I'm still putting my money on him as the number one fantasy guy on this team. Um, he's now at 58, Levine's at 34. I think they're trending in different directions. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Bulls? So I was hearing that uh, Coach uh, Boylan uh, purposely kind of benched Wendell Carter Jr. in this one to kind of, I don't know, teach him a lesson or he felt like he could learn something by just kind of watching the game instead of being in it. I hate that because the only thing that this team should really be doing right now is just developing their young studs, which Wendell Carter is. So, uh, look, I think this could be maybe a good time to try to buy low on Wendell Carter. I don't think I would give up something really valuable for him at the moment, but uh, I still like this guy's outlook for the second half of the season. So, uh, I would definitely just stay strong if you have Wendell Carter Jr. Love your take on Lori Markinen. I think he will be the best player on this team. And, um, yeah, all right. That's all I got. And, uh, you know, it's tough times for the Bulls, but things are going to be looking really nice come draft time when they land that number one draft pick and they start dr- and they start uh, getting preparing for Zion Williamson. So hang in there, Chicago Bulls fans. Mm-hmm. Brighter days are ahead. All right, uh, last game for me, the Philly 76ers and the Phoenix Suns. This one was surprisingly a little closer than I thought it would be, man. I was watching some of this game, and in the beginning, Philly got off to a big lead to start this game. So little surprise that the Suns hung in there and came back in this one. Uh, the Sixers got the win, though, 132-127. Going to look in on the Sixers. Neil, all show long we were talking about uh how tonight felt like a great night for dfs because the fillings one of the guys i immediately thought of because jimmy butler was out was ben simmons i i was planning on playing him if i was going to set up a dfs lineup looked pretty good tonight 29 points a block with six assists three rebounds he went to the line 23 times that's outrageous made 15 of those 7 of 11 from the field. J.J. Redick also uh, filling that void that was left with no Jimmy Butler. J.J. Redick played solid. 27 points, 2 steals, 4 assists, 4 rebounds, 8 of 10 from the field, 5 of 8 from 3-point range, and 7 of 12 total from the field. Great game from Redick. Joel Embiid. Another guy you probably always need to think of whenever Jimmy Butler is going to be out. He did not disappoint. Neil, we saw some fantastic games from Biggs tonight. Anthony Davis with that monster game. Cat with a monster game. Joel Embiid says, put me in that conversation. 42 points with 18 rebounds. The defensive stats, man. Three steals, two blocks, two assists. He even gave you a three he was he had James Harden free throw numbers tonight. 17 of 19 from the line, 12 of 23 from the field. Neil, I'm getting exhausted talking about Joel Embiid right now. He did so much. Uh it's unbelievable. Cork Maz with 10 points, three assists, four boards. Uh Bolden had four points in just 16 minutes in a start. He had four fouls. Uh, we're not counting on Cork Maz or Bolden. T.J. McConnell with seven points, six assists, four rebounds off the bench. Not too much else to talk about off the bench. Neil, what are your thoughts on the Sixers? Yeah, Joel L. Embiid has just been a beast, hasn't he? It's just so impressive. Uh, like you said, Ben Simmons. I guess they went to hack a Simmons. I don't. I. I don't know. Um, they Embiid they must have. But they Embiid had nineteen free throws too. This is crazy. So I don't know if it was what they did. Um, they shot. Over 50, somewhere in the 50 free throws. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, anyway, uh, this would be a great team to do a DFS because, you know, it's going to be a high-scoring game. Um, 
132, I think 100 to 127. So crazy night for them. Um, Quirk Maz got the start. Didn't do much with all these um, all these uh, points out there and the uh, I should say uh, fantasy stats out there. So I was looking to see how he would do, and he didn't do very much um, outside the big three in Reddick. I'm just kind of waiting and seeing. Um, not not making a mistake here and trying to push anything. So I don't think there's anyone really of value outside those three. Uh, Phoenix tonight uh, led by Devin Booker, 37 points, two rebounds, eight assists on 10 and 22 shooting. He went to the line 17 times, made 15 free throws, two three-pointers, no defensive stats. Uh, De'Anthony Ayton, excuse me, DeAndre Ayton, 18 points, 11 rebounds, two assists, eight of 12 shooting, two of two from the line, two steals, no blocks. Um, De'Anthony Melton, that's where I got messed up here. 23 minutes, 10 points, three rebounds, three assists on three of six shooting, three of four from the free throw line, two steals and a block, four turnovers. TJ Warren, a very quiet night from him. Just two of eight from the field in 20 minutes, seven points, two rebounds, no assists, no steals, no blocks. Mikel Bridges, someone actually dropped. I know he has started to become a buzzy guy to pick up. He's getting plenty of minutes. Tonight's just 26, though. He just not doesn't do enough Um for my taste. I think there's better streaming options tonight. Just two points on one of eight shooting six rebounds and assist. Um, no steals, no defensive stats tonight, no blocks off the bench. Uh, Josh Jackson played 27 minutes, went for 16, six and four solid night from him. Three or four from the line, six of 14 from the field, a steal, a block, a three pointer Kelly Oubre, someone who I thought once he got traded over here might have value. I have long moved on from him and have not regretted it. Just 23 minutes tonight, nine points, no assists, no rebounds, no blocks, no steals. Um, Elio Kobo, someone who's not going to have any fantasy value this year. We'll see if he develops into a startable NBA player and fantasy asset later on in future seasons. 18 minutes tonight, Troy Daniels, 15. Rashawn Holmes played 14 minutes in the revenge game here. 13 points, four rebounds, two assists on four or five shooting. Five or six in the free throw line, one block. Um, uh, I am not going on the Rashawn Holmes hype train this year. Adrian, uh, what happened to TJ Warren? Looks like he was not injured. He is 52nd on the player rate this year. I don't know why he stuck to 20 minutes. Maybe just a matchup issue. Coach, uh, maybe the coach, um, he's got um, Boylan texted him during the game and told him to sit him out and watch the game and learn more from the sidelines. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, any thoughts on, um, let me just finish my thoughts. Ubre, I'm not picking up bridges. I'm dropping Melton. I'm not picking up Holmes. I'm not picking up. Um, it's just Booker eight and Warren for me right now on this team. Any thoughts fr- from you? You know, you mentioned Warren may have gotten into some foul trouble tonight. I think he had okay. five fouls. So it could be why he only saw 20 minutes, but Neil, I agree with you, man. The underlying theme for the Suns has just been pretty much disappointment. Like, other than Booker and Aiton, you know, we had high hopes for Bridges, and he's been disappointing. I had super high hopes for Melton. He's been disappointing. When Ube Jr. joined this team, I wondered, could could he emerge as a guy? As you said, we need to move on from Ube. He's been awful, hasn't done much. Josh Jackson, I can't really trust coming off the bench. He had a nice game tonight, but tomorrow he could get 20 minutes and put up a low-end line. Um, So we have all these guys here who have potential, like Rashawn Holmes, um, but we just can't trust them. And so this team's pretty disappointing. So I don't trust anyone except for the two studs that they got at the top. But let's just keep an eye on their situation. Maybe things can change uh, into the second half of the season. And that's all I got on the Suns. Neil, any closing thoughts here? Uh, thanks for mentioning the foul trouble with Warren. I did miss that. So, yes, that would explain his absence tonight. Not having, not not because he was forced to watch the game from the sidelines um, by coach's decision. That is all I've got tonight. I know you've got to head out of here. Um, you want to sign off, and then yes. I'll be back for game nine. All right, I am out of here, you guys. Thank you so much for sticking with us uh, on this long show. Want to remind you guys real quick, go get the in-season premium membership. Great stuff over there. Uh, it's a it's a, it's a a no-brainer deal at the current price. The ad drop advice, the rankings projection, the dynasty stuff. You interact with all the HB pros. 
great. And uh, I'm out of here. Follow me on Twitter at Adrian Benjamins. Hit Neil up as well at Ball with Neil. Quick question for the listeners before I get out of here. I'm thinking of getting one of those Oculus VR uh, headsets to watch the NBA games. If any of you listeners are doing this, it can let me hit me up. Let me know how it is. Is it a waste? Is it not as good as just watching a game on regular TV? I'm curious. Let me know before I fork over $200 on this thing. And just want to thank you guys. Neil will be back for one more game. I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, on to the last game of the evening. Oklahoma City at the Los Angeles Lakers. A nice win by OKC here, 107 to 100. OKC led by... Paul George, 37 points, four rebounds, two assists on 15 of 29 shooting. Five of seven from the free throw line, two three-pointers, three steals, no blocks. Russell Russell Westbrook, excuse me, played 36 minutes, triple-doubled, 14, 16, and 10. However, struggled mightily from the uh, field. Three of 20 shooting, seven of 10 from the free throw line, a three-pointer, two steals, and two blocks. Steven Adams, double-doubles, 14 points, 15 rebounds, 3 assists on 5 of 10 shooting, 4 of 6 on the free throw line, 0 steals, 2 blocks. Um, Jeremy Grant, 36 minutes, 13 points, 8 rebounds, 0 assists, 5 of 10 shooting, 2 of 2 from the free throw line, a 3-pointer, no steals, and no blocks. Terrence Ferguson, 19 points, 2 points, uh, excuse me, 19 minutes, 2 points, 1 rebound, no assists, 1 of 7 shooting. No defensive stats, no turnovers. Off the bench, Dennis Schroeder plays 29 minutes, 10, 7, and 6. 4, 13 from the field, 1 of 4 from the line. A field goal, I mean, excuse me, a three-pointer. No defensive stats, three turnovers. Um, Abdel Nader plays 14 minutes. Nerlens Noel, 12. Patrick Patterson, 12. Hamadou Diallo, 11. This Westbrook... Um, percentages is just getting really struggling if you drafted him early especially in a cat league where i had him end of first round beginning of second round he is nowhere near that uh well 15th but um that's that's a lot lower than we expected 30th and nine cat league so um tonight does not help adam struggling a bit to 81 on a per game basis in a cat leagues um i think he'll get a little better but um really Killing you with the free throw percentage of 53%. Paul George, on the other hand, has stuck around uh, into the um, and has soared into the top part of the um, first round, fifth overall on a per game basis in a category leagues and continues to perform there. I don't um, own Jeremy Grant. He is good in block field goal percentages. Certainly nine cat leagues, he is worth owning because his turnover is very low. But just in eight cat leagues, he does two things well. Everything else is a negative. 104 on a per game basis. Um, so blocks and field goal percentages if you can withstand the other slight detriments to his game, particularly on uh, points and assists. Schroeder is another guy that I think is pretty good i mean he doesn't really hurt you too much points doesn't really hurt you too much and he's right around zero points three pointers positive assists positive free throw um obviously blocks rebounds don't expect that from a point guard who's now a converted shooting guard so i i still think this guy could be owned if he's out there probably already picked up but um still rolling along no one else here to really mention let's hop over to the Los Angeles Lakers still without LeBron James being led tonight by um, Brandon Ingram as far as the starting unit goes. 17 points, 11 rebounds, 6 assists, 8 of 21 from the field, 1 of 2 from the free throw line, no three-pointers, no steals, a block, 4 turnovers. Kyle Kuzma, very quiet night in 16 minutes. Looks like he did get injured uh, with a lower back contusion. So we'll see how serious that is uh, tonight. Um, one of four from the field, just a four points of rebound and assist. Certainly worth holding on to. We'll be very interested to see um, 
how this team was going to score without LeBron and Kyle if they're both out going forward. Um, JaVale McGee plays 20 minutes, goes for 15, 8, and 1 on 7 to 16 from the field, 1 to 3 from the free throw line, 4 blocks. Lonzo Ball, 35 minutes, but just 3 points on 1 of 4 shooting. Um, surprised he took so few shots. 3 um, defensive stats, a steal, and 2 blocks. So that was good to see. And he also went 1 of 5 from the line. So just detrimental on both those percentages categories tonight. Josh Hart. Double doubles, 13, 15, and 2 may be a beneficiary of these, the lack of scoring players out there. 5 to 16 from the line, I mean, from the field tonight. So struggled there, 2 of 4 from the line. 1 three pointer, 1 steal, and a block. Turnover. Contavious Caldwell Pope led all scorers for the Lakers off the bench with 34 minutes, 25 points, 3 rebounds, 2 assists on 6 of 14 shooting. Uh, Lance Stevenson gets 21 minutes. Tyson Chandler, 17. Zubac, 10. Um, as far as this team goes, I think Hart, if, if, um, uh, if, um, Kuzma is going to be out and LeBron is going to be out, looks like, um, he could come back for the next game. Uh, we'll see what happens there. Josh Hart could be streamer worthy. I think a Lonzo ball I would rather have, although he is probably owned. Hart might be available. KCP, perhaps those two guys keep an eye on if, um, Kuzma is out for an extended period of time. Other than that, they are not uh, worth owning once this team gets fully healthy. Rondo is expected to be back in another month, so he's he's out for a while as well and sort of on the fringe himself. All right, that's going to do it for the Box Score Breakdown Edition January 2, 2019. We'll be back again tomorrow night with a short set of three games and um, reminding you that our primary chief sponsor here at Hoopball is Hawaiian Isles Kona Coffee. Find their products at hawaiianisles.com or you can find them on amazon.com as well. Hoop Guide premium membership still available for I believe $15 um, perhaps even less as we head to the new year and um the DFS contest is on Friday, so hopefully you'll join us for that. Um, take care. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.